I'm Kelly Ellis, certified design coach and home makeover expert. Ashley Green, best known for her role in the Twilight series and her fiance Paul Corey, are about to be married. They both want their home to reflect this new chapter in their lives. Today, we're tackling the dining room. It's very masculine. It is. It's very dark. And then the floor is dark. The main issues in the dining room are Ashley and Paul's masculine versus feminine conflict and a tendency to play it too safe. This is safe. Theme. This yeah. is safe for you. I've got my work cut out for me, design therapy style. Masculine and feminine challenge is really a lesson in understanding how people perceive certain things. Each of us has a gut reaction to certain materials, fabrics, metals, finishes, colors, and we instantly think of things as masculine or feminine. So I got to challenge their thoughts. What does a dining room mean to you? First thing I say, mom and dad's house, dining room, go. We didn't really have a formal dining room. Okay. I love them. The idea of bringing everyone together, I think we have brought more people together at a table like this than our family ever did. Right, what yeah. about you? Activities. So basically how you're using your table now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So having family, food, activities, crafts, this is your spot. Yep. That shows how important it is to you. <laughs> so I want to do an exercise with the two of you where we can challenge and understand what you consider to be masculine and what you consider to be feminine Ooh. and what that means. I like okay? games. It's just going to make you think about things. So we know we've got this great anchor of a masculine table. Mm -hmm. So I want to balance things out a little bit. And we also want to have that designer look. That's mm -hmm. why I'm here. Yes. To have that, you need to mix the finishes. We need glass, metal, leather, and fabric. And we also have our woods, and we can mix woods as well. So let's start off with metal finishes. Paul, I want you to tell me what out of these two golds to you looks more masculine and what looks more feminine. Masculine, feminine. And then same with the silvers? Same. Yeah. Okay, what about you? I agree. Ooh. So let's talk about this. This is metal, it's gold, and it's silver. But the only difference is this is brushed and this is polished. So in your mind, what do you think reminds you of polished gold or polished silver that makes it feminine? Jewelry. Jewelry. So shiny, pretty things are feminine. Right. And a little more rustic, a little more rough, a little more scruff, right, are masculine things. And so when we choose finishes, we tend to pinpoint those things right away. And so remember that because I'm going to challenge you a little further as well. So here's another example. So we have nail heads, just like you have nail heads on your seats. Mm -hmm. And I notice that you have a unfinished brushed nail head. So keep that in mind. Tell me which one looks more masculine and which one looks more feminine. Masculine. Feminine. Right? So we said the polished is feminine and the brushed is masculine. Is there anything about this chair that looks masculine? Pins. Right. But when you look at this chair, do you go, wow, that's manly? No. No. <laughs> look what we just said. Twice you've picked brushed and brushed as masculine, yet this chair is not masculine and it has brushed nail heads challenged, mind blown, right? So we're gonna look at these fabrics, right? And you can feel them. They have a nice texture to them, right? This is all something that you probably pick in this house because they're all grays. <laughs> hey! Yeah, probably. These are softer fabrics, right? You would think these would be typically what? Feminine? Because they're softer, not like this rough fabrics. But we can change the way we feel about this. If I put this really soft, pretty fabric, on a completely square chair with maybe a brushed different metal look to it, mm -hmm. it's not feminine anymore, right? Yeah. Now to balance that, we need to pick a leather. I picture the rest of the chairs in a really hardy, kind of a masculine Ooh, leather. I like that. You don't have any leather in here, so this is gonna create that balance, right? Okay. Things that we don't already have. So if we have this in a leather chair with a nice wood leg to it, we've got this, something like this in a big banquette type seat and then our glass and metal will come in the cabinets that I'd like to put here and the lighting. You can display now, right? It needs to be proper display but now we have a balance. You've yeah. got your china, you've got glassware, you've got the metals, definitely already have our wood here, we know yeah. that. Some leather and some fabrics that are going to balance everything out. So let's just focus on that and go forward with all the things you've learned here, challenging your ideas of masculine and feminine and what that means. We're gonna to pull together elements in like the best way we possibly can and make this room function. Yeah. And flow and feel. The all right. three Fs. The three Fs. The three Fs, babe, the three Fs. <laughs>
We're gonna make sure that the function stays the same, the flow will stay the same, but the feel is gonna be way different. I love it. Yeah, it's gonna be a great, great room. I'm glad we could blow your mind. <laughs> <laughs> We made some awesome progress in the dining room today. We challenged their ideas of masculine and feminine and came up with some eye-opening solutions to help me design that room perfectly. This is design therapy at its best. You're gonna love this. Damn. Oh my god. <laughs>